Welcome to the About Sex Podcast, where we discuss... Pterodactyls! Uh, let's stick to Precambrian. <laughs> uh, no, we actually discuss sex. <laughs> and sex! My name is Josh, and with me as always is my lovely wife, Angela Skirtu. Tell us who you are, Angela. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and an ASEC certified sex therapist. Awesome. Wow. And today our guest is Nathan Shaw. Good to Hi, be Nathan. here. Good to be here. He is host of the Brothers on Whatever show. Mm -hmm. It's a podcast. How, how can they find your podcast? Brothersonwhatever.com. All awesome. right. That's oh, so it. easy. Easy. Makes it All easy. All right. Well, so today we kind of wanted to start with an excerpt from my book, actually. Right. So I'm, her new book is called? Helping Couples Overcome Infidelity. It is a therapist manual, but it's written for both. You can easily read this and learn lots of right. good stuff. If you, yeah, if you can read, you can read if this. You can, well, I always, so like people are always worried about buying a clinical book, right? right? But like I write all my clinical books easy, so there's not like a lot of terms people couldn't understand. Yeah, you write them for the, so that anybody can read. Really I don't have it a thesaurus the whole like, time while you, I'm writing. <laughs> you don't need to know advanced math. Is a thesaurus a dinosaur? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, okay. But um, shh. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, so we'll start with the story from my book, and then we'll get into that, and then we'll yeah, get into more. Yeah, she's going to read a little excerpt from yeah. her book. All right. So it says, Michael and Cindy came into session after Michael had cheated on his wife. Michael had started an affair with a woman, Rhonda, in their friendship circle. He and Rhonda started by running together because they both were interested in doing a marathon. Initially, Cindy thought nothing of this because she was also training for a marathon, but had different days she could train. At the beginning of his relationship with Rhonda, Michael was very open with Cindy about what they were doing, talking about, and when they would run together. But there came a point where Cindy started to get uncomfortable with how close Michael seemed to get with Rhonda. Mm -hmm. Conversations with her about her would come up day to day, and Cindy would try to point out her concerns. Michael would tell Cindy she was just being jealous, and she needed to get over herself. And after a while, Michael stopped telling her about his relationship with Rhonda. But at that point, it had gotten inappropriately close. He was disengaging from their marriage and even their sex life at times. Things got worse when the two couples, along with several other couples, went on a cruise together. Michael and Rhonda seemed to be openly flirting with each other on the cruise. And at times, Michael would make excuses to leave the family to go spend some alone time. Alone time is in parentheses, by the way. <laughs> Cindy felt this was su suspicious and decided to follow him secretly. And as she followed him, she saw Michael walk to Rhonda's room. Cindy saw them go into her room together, and Cindy confronted them both at the room by pounding on the door and screaming she knew what they were doing. Oh, yeah. I always do that when I come to see anybody. Wow. Wow. Like, I, whenever you're in the bathroom, I bang on the door, and I go, I know what you're doing. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, I mean, what do you do, right? Like, right. So no, Mike, you flip out. Yeah. So Michael shamefully walked out of the room while Rhonda stayed back. And there was more confrontation, but Michael convinced Cindy to go back to their own room. And so then when they got back from the cruise, they made their first therapy appointment with me. So this is actually right. a typical story. It was all Cindy's fault. Oh. She let him hang out with the girl in the first place. Mm -hmm. so. Well, it's hard, though, because what do you... I mean, like, are you allowed to have friends of the opposite sex? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, you're not. There's I mean, a boundary. Like, uh, it's I, tough. I, I have never had a best friend of the opposite sex where I spend, like, multiple days a week alone mm -hmm. with them after being married. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think that's because where it if I were, I would be trying to bang them. Right, <laughs> that's really well. You shouldn't be having conversations, especially emotional and things, with anybody but your wife. You shouldn't be going to another woman that's a friend of yours and being like, "Yeah, me and my wife, we just haven't been having sex." Commiserate, blah blah yeah. blah, because yeah. then it takes it to a whole new level. And next thing you know, you're doing the hippity dip. Yeah, that's <laughs> just how it goes. Was that another word Wait. for sex? Yes. <laughs> oh, it's the hippity dip. Hippity do. I don't know. Hippity, yeah. oh, hippity dip. <laughs> it makes sense. Tip -top -doo. So is that a common one where people start like a, a friendship? Well, actually, it's the most common one I'll see is people start by commiserating. And it won't even start as a friendship. It'll just start. Sometimes it'll be at workplace. Sometimes it'll be with another friend. But like you notice that that person's down. And so mm -hmm. then they try to talk to them, see what's going on. And then, yeah, they start sharing things that they're not sharing with their partner. I, I don't think that you can't be friends with somebody of the opposite sex, but I do think that's really my line right there. It's like, wait, you are, you saying, clear things, boundaries around are it. you saying things to this person that you've never really talked to your partner about? Right. And why? What's holding you back? Yeah. And what is, level of getting to know some? Because what happens a lot is they're like, I'm leaving you because I got to know this other person. It's like, why were you taking all this time getting to know them? I mean, it shouldn't. There should be a level of getting to know, and it doesn't go beyond this. Well, clearly they were unhappy and they were just looking for something. Well, I tell yeah. you what, there's always going to be something 
either better, not necessarily better, but newer Different. right? and fresh. It can look better or feel like it could be right. better. Because it's new. I mean, once you've been together for so long, I mean, you know each other. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's it not so like a big mystery I know, we know. here. We've been married I've 10, been 10 years. years. So done. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> old. No. Like stale <laughs> potato chips. No, we um, always keep it new and fresh. Yeah. But like one thing I think that's important for people to realize is that even though that you've been together for 10, 20 years, there's always things you don't know about each other. And I actually call my couples on this all the time. There's always new stuff that they've kind of held back because people are like scared. What? what do I not know about you, Angela? Oh, How well, dare I'm you? not going to. No, I tell you all the time. But like <laughs> sexual interests, like your sexual interests change over time. So we were comes... just talking about this. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> like he was saying that like a lot of people will go through their whole marriage and never really even talk to their spouse about, about sex. About their sexual interests. And I mean, I think your sexual interest, especially like you two like to experiment and keep things fresh. So I think it's got to get more and more you know i mean it yeah. comes up so there there are going to be th- new things to try and there comes a point where you have to add a cheetah <laughs> right right and whistles and whips and chickens well, you don't have to keep pushing a boundary Midgets. you can still just mix it up you mix right. it up but you do have to have a few things in your sexual repertoire right. you have to have a few things in your pocket to try but yeah. you gotta and we've talked about this before you gotta and i do this five minutes in the meeting a woman I get it all on <laughs> sex right out on the table. Like everybody knows what I like. Yeah. But when I was married the first really, time, really within five minutes. Oh yeah, I have this five minute policy. First date. Hey, this is how I like to do it. Are you into these it. sexual things? Because if not, I so, don't know if and I'm what are and what are those things? I basically do. I mean, I I try to turn a conversation sexual within five minutes, but ease into it. I think wow. I've gotten away from. that I'm really a lot. bad at that. I take about five years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, how, do you, how do you get it in five minutes? It's it's pretty it's simple, funny. actually. Yeah. Um, how? Tell me. Well, I, teach what, us your tricks. Teach us ju- <laughs> it, Jedi. It, it just depends. <laughs> if it's a girl that's got a boyfriend or something and she mentions it, I'll be like, oh, man, I, I, I sure miss having a girlfriend, too, because I know you guys are having sex all the time, and I know they're not. Mm-hmm. And then here we go. Oh, oh, no. No, we never have it. I just, I'm, you know, it's... I don't know. I've got different ways of doing it, but I really don't do it anymore because I'm old and I want to get home and watch Dateline. <laughs> so I don't have time for this, you know? You're, t- you're too tired to have sex. I am. I'm old. Sex. I don't have time for that crap. My, my, I'm like, do you like forensic files? No. Okay, we can't be. <laughs> yeah. You want somebody to cuddle on the couch next to you. Oh, that's your rule. That's funny. And then maybe once a month. Get one. But me and my first wife, mm-hmm. which that marriage was six and a half years, we never talked about sex until we were getting divorced. And then it came up. And then we were having the best ever. <laughs> At the end. But it wasn't going to save it. But it wasn't going to yeah. save it. Yeah. No, not for me. So Why did you never talk about it? Because I think we were raised real religious, and mm-hmm. it was like, mm-hmm. I you mean, it was, it, was it was pretty much, I mean, we had oral and stuff, but it was pretty much straight stuff. I mean, yeah, very vanilla. Oh, By it, the way, we were was. raised religious, too. I think yep. it has this way of turning you <laughs> to the dark side. One time, I, one time I accidentally... Since we're talking about Jedis, right? One yeah. time I accidentally licked her ass, which now I pretty much do it on purpose. That's what the first thing I go for. It's the first but thing It is. Like. Just want you to know, uh, ass play is in wait, play. Yes. So, not a kiss on the mouth. You just go straight to oh, yeah. the butthole. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Kissing on the mouth is too... Uh, that's that's too intimate. That's relationship yeah, that's relationships. Stuff. But she was like, oh, my God, you licked my ass. Oh, my God. Do you know what you're doing? You know? So it was a real, like, real big deal. Yeah. I, I honestly thought she was going to go, like, tell on me. She was like, tell who? who? <laughs> like, the, the higher ups of the, the church. priest or something? <laughs> <laughs> he licked my ass. Oh, my God. Oh, does oh. that mean anything? And they're like, could you expound upon that? <laughs> yeah. We're going to need videotape yeah. for this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so you got to discuss it, folks. I'm telling you, if you're in a marriage and you have not discussed this, yeah. it's, you're, it's stupid. Yeah. It's dumb. Well, and I think that's what's leading to affairs, really. I mean, my whole book is is different stories of people who want things sexually. They're interested in trying new things, but because they're so scared to talk, they instead talk to strangers or people at work and tell them those things. Who seem more open to talking about it. Who seem more open, but really it's just that they're a little bit less familiar with them, and so there's less risk involved. Yeah. Right, you care less what that other person thinks about you, actually, than your spouse does. And yet, then you start to does. care with them, right. As a result right. of doing it, because you've been vulnerable with them, then you start to care. Yeah. But this stuff should have been talked about before you ever started seriously dating or mm-hmm. got in a marriage. Oh if yeah. You want to get down to it? Mm-hmm. I mean, if she's not, if you're really into anal, like you're really into it, mm-hmm. and she's totally against it, and it's going to be a killer that down should the road, be a... then just stop it right here. Yeah. Just yeah. move on. I mean, some women will not do blowjobs. 
Well, you're out. That's unacceptable. <laughs> you're out. <laughs> unacceptable. It's fine, but let's get let's but, know yeah, this now. It, let's not right. let me try to talk you into it. And no, you, that pressure you're number you, three of that never works. That no, never works. No, no, no. And you should. Doesn't like it. No. Yeah, right. exactly. It shouldn't be about trying to convince them to be something they're not. Although I they're do not. spend a lot of time talking about blowjobs. <laughs> do you? A lot of time thinking about it. Is that a common topic? Well, it is because actually... Because a lot of guys some, want it. Sometimes the reason somebody doesn't like a blowjob is because they've only seen um, like deep throating happening in porn. And that's okay. actually not a very fun So they don't really know what it is. Yeah, and so yeah. like some of what I try to talk to women about is how blowjobs can be fun, ways to make it a better experience. Do tell. Um... Well, um, are you open to me telling an old, old story from of an me? ex? From an ex, actually. Oh, Is that no. okay? Just say it was me. Go on. Okay, it was you. So, well, I had a really great introduction to oral sex, and it was this guy who was really, he was wanted me. it to be a good experience. Everybody knows it's this the ex now. really small. No, oh, I will edit another that all out. I'll take it off. It's fine. Work. So we've had this whole conversation about, like, <laughs> how can this be a good experience for you? I want you to enjoy yourself. And mm. he was like, are there any things you like to eat, for example? And I was like, I know what you're I doing. like fun dip. And he's like that we could totally use that yeah. and so one of my first experiences was with fun dip well, and it was reasonable. a great experience i really wish you had said hot wings <laughs> jo- josh is on his way to the store right now oh, oh we have fun oh dip. we have fun dip. We it's totally always have in the it. house yeah, yeah, yeah. but i'm saying what i'm saying is that if, if people were approaching it, it that, that way like no i do i love fun dip i've had it since my childhood but yeah um but yeah, like I think that if couples approached it early on and, and easy like that, mm-hmm. then you you can be eased into a blowjob, and yeah. it can be a nice experience. But I think because people only have porn to look at, they always assume it's this really crappy style, and Aggre- you don't even they assume it's aggressive and it's painful and it's uncomfortable, yeah. and it doesn't have to be any of those. Taste bad. You can just sick the tits and. Do the tip and like use your hand. I just uh, hand uh, gestures, guys. This works. A lot of women <laughs> assume, well, then they have to get it all over their face with the yeah, ejaculate. Yeah, most women do not want mouth. you to come on their face. Most you don't, don't have to do that. Most cool women don't do. want you to eat. <laughs> <laughs> the cool ones do. Most women don't even want to swallow cum. Right. right. Which some guys expect. It. It's like, hey, yeah. you got to swallow or you're, you're rejecting me. And okay, like, guys, come on. That's the wrong that's, hole for that's rejection. That's why you keep <laughs> tissues by the bed. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, I was talking to this girl yesterday over Messenger because we're going to get together and have sex. And I was uh-huh. like, do you like cum on your face? Mm-hmm. She was like, yeah, sometimes. I was like, okay. Well, I, I mean, I get, yeah. like, I ask these things, folks. You ask it ahead. I don't so care. I have a question. If... Are you, are, do you feel more comfortable asking it online or in person? Are you the oh, same? Oh, I'll do it in person. I don't care. You would just have no <laughs> no qualms about it. No care in the That's world. You know why? Because most people don't. They're, they, now, I, I, I know there's a time and place for everything. Sure. You're not going to do it sure. at, at a funeral. No, at I, a funeral. Know, well, I, I know. I know a funeral. funeral. Yeah. I know the situation where. If this conversation is heading this way, I can start asking these things, mm-hmm. and they're going to be okay with it. Um, but no, there there is a time and place. And I told you about when I was at the bar that one time I was emceeing this bikini contest, and I was talking to two cougars, and I call them that because they had shirts on that said they were cougars. Yeah. Okay. And I was just having a nice conversation, and my buddy comes up, and he's like, "Do you girls like anal?" Yeah. And they were like... turned off by it and told him to get lost. And then as soon as he walked away, they're like. You know, if your buddy would have did things right, he'd have known that we do like anal. Yeah. <laughs> and I end up getting with one of them, which was great. Yeah. But yeah. but you gotta know. You what gotta you not do be. You gotta, you gotta not act like the, a freshman. No, like you walking can't. up. Hey, like hey, like hey you kid. chicks want a dick in your mouth? Ah. Right. No, that never turns a woman on. <laughs> they want to be respected. They That's do. a big part yeah, of it. Yeah, we're people. I hear. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of young men don't, don't understand that, and they think they're supposed to like pull their pigtails and slap their ass. Well, let's be fair about, or let's talk about that. I don't think men are taught how to talk to women. No, you they're know? not. Like, I think it should be who's... just like home ec. There should be like. How to talk to a woman class, like really? I think so too, because I mean, you t- you get the STD talk and maybe the condom and birth control talk, or but you not don't those. get like, what if you want to date a girl and you just find her attractive? How do you have that conversation? Mm-hmm. Did anybody tell you guys about that? No, I'm still waiting to learn. <laughs> no, I was. I mean, like I said, I was religious. It's trial and, by fire. And we were told not to even discuss sex, right? I mean, so, yeah. uh, no, I wasn't, but. The thing is, women are just as dirty as guys. Yeah, Can't but be. they got it. You got to approach it different, guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, a woman is might be a sex enthusiast, but you can't. Our it's we call it sex enthusiast. We call it sex. Most enthusiast. people call it slut. They might be a slut, but they don't want to be made to feel like it, and they and don't want to publicize let's, let's it. Everybody likes that sex. word slut. I yeah, like I don't even like it. You don't even have to say enthusiast. Everybody likes sex. Everybody's a they sexual do. person. Let's be fair. And here's the reality: if they don't, those are the ones who are the outliers. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, there are asexual people. True. Um, but yeah, there's very sure, and that's rare, okay rare if they want to be that, that way. That's I fine. talked to a girl the other day. She was in from L.A. and she we started talking about sex and she's like, I want to have sex like once every six months or so, mm-hmm. and then I just want the guy to get lost and I'm not sucking his dick or nothing. And I'm thinking. That's no fun. <laughs> I'm like, boy, you need to go down to that like that's not a relationship. fertility clinic yeah. and like stop guys on the way in. <laughs> and be like, don't get fixed. You're perfect for me. <laughs> you, know? you can't get an erection. We'll do it once every six months. She so. could always hire a sex worker. There are male sex workers. They yeah. do that. You have to pay, but whatever. Yeah, but uh, she gets the sex the way she wants. I'm once just every like, six lady, months. it ain't or, gonna really work. Really, women. I mean, a lot of women don't really have to pay for it. They just go to a bar and say, hey. Yeah, you could just say, you just walk the, in the vagina's door. open, Yeah, you people. just kick yeah. down the door and say, vagina's open. Who wants in? You know, <laughs> It's and, true. Somebody will hop on it. Yeah, somebody. <laughs> that is true. Uh, if I'm there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you know. You can find so him at brothersonwhatever.com. Brothers on <laughs> and he'll hop on that, message. ladies. <laughs> I have slowed down so much, since, though. Yeah. I, I mean, back when I was like 2006 through eight, it was just like a free-for-all. Because I was at the bar till 3 a.m. Was that was after your divorce? Yeah, yeah. Of course, was, it's going to uh, be a right. left fray after that. Yeah. I was at the bar till three a.m. and now I'm like home by ten thirty. And mm-hmm. like, women, oh, that's late. Most women ain't just cool with to that. Cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to cuddle. Yes, yeah, and, and watch. You know, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. I thought it was Dateline. Now you're making I your story all, up. I like all. You the watch shows, them all. <laughs> <laughs> Hours of cuddling. Love it. So you mentioned something about. Uh, Turn-ons in your 20s versus turn-ons in your late 30s. and oh, What's yeah. the difference? Well, I think turn-ons in your 20s and 30s is like tits, ass, mm-hmm. looks. Yeah. Now it's a girl's got a full-time job and, you know, that's that's my she turn-on. She's got a job. <laughs> she takes care of her kids. She's, she's not, got a job. She's not insane. Maybe. Yeah. 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 It, that's like, oh, that's a huge turn on. Tell me about your day. That's dirty talk. <laughs> Ooh, tell me about your 401k. Oh, God. That's it's growing they so much. They match it? Oh, oh I'm going to come oh, early. I hope it's at least 5% <laughs> match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I mean, it, it is like totally different things turn me on now than, yeah. than when I was But there's still a certain level of physical attractiveness oh, yeah, that is. you need. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Well, when you're short, fat, and bald, no, there's not. I just stop doing anything. <laughs> as long as... <laughs> You know, as long as they're working 40 hours a week. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. That's hilarious. Uh, well, I hear right now is like in the 40s is actually when a lot of people are getting divorced. So there's a lot of newly single women and men. Um, mm-hmm. Some of my clients say it's kind of like being in high school again because everybody's flirting on Facebook. And mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, they say know. Facebook's for older people. So, yeah. yeah. Wait, I'm old? Yeah. We're oh, no. 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 <laughs> I just I found what, out. When? When is? I think we. I asked you this before, but when is women's peak sexualness? Because these 35. women. That, okay, yeah. these women that I hang out with that are like forty to sixty. Mm-hmm. I can't handle it. They're, yeah. they're insatiable. Oh yeah. yeah. They want to go like not all night into the wee hours, and then they want to go to Hollywood toy shop and get handcuffs and whips and shit. <laughs> yeah. And go back and do it some more, and I'm thinking, man, I mean, my now you just know, gave up. Now you You're know raw. why they are cougars, because <laughs> yeah. women from 35 oh, till about menopause, till menopause and even beyond yeah. for some women, are like, I need to get it in now. And then the guys, that's when you guys are slowing down, and mm-hmm. so you're like, 18 uh, was my prime. Like, 18, that was it. That's a, yeah, <laughs> really, it is. Closed like for a shop. two-month period. Would... <laughs> well, no, it, it, it's still pretty high, but like that was when it was the highest of... Well, what women and I think when you're single too, it's going to mm-hmm. feel more intense too. Well, what women got to understand is, th- you can only get hard and come so many times. Maybe three to five times a day. No, and <laughs> I tell you what, that you, is pushing that, it. and that's them really working it. That is, and like, that is you needing lots of lube, or you're going to be raw. Right. Well, you'll yeah. be raw at three, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it depends I, on how long you go, too, though. I say all women have to do is spread their legs, but at some point, that is all you have to do. I do have to get hard, mm-hmm. but yeah. man, if we're doing it seven times in an hour, I can't do it. She better be on top some. You're going to get tired. <laughs> Especially those quads. Like, ugh. Well, it could be your workout for the day. Now you don't have to go to the well, gym. That's true. I don't go there anyway. <laughs> Sex <Sexicide. laughs> You don't go anyway. <laughs> Problem solved. I tell women, look, I'll tell women, I'll like, listen, if you want to have sex a bunch of times a night, that's fine. But you're gonna have to suck this thing. Mm-hmm. You're just gonna have to to get it hard because it, gets, like me, just looking at you on the fifth time isn't cutting it. No, he gets tired. Oh, yeah. it, it, yeah. it gives He's up. All tuckered out. He's all it, tuckered it is. Out. It's just over with. And like yeah, you you're to... shooting blank. There's nothing coming out anymore. No, it's like dust. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like powdered milk. Dust. Yeah, oh <laughs> powdered milk. Powdered I like that. Milk. That's funny. <laughs> 
And I tell you what, now, whoever's listening to this, you might think, you might think, oh, this is a, a just a funny conversation. This is serious business. No, I'm no, giving you, we're, we're making it funny, but we're giving you. These the are good, life lessons. This I'm giving you the goods here, man. Okay. And, we, and we are. Oh, we're doing yeah. it in a funny manner, but just dissect it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, so you mentioned the sec- you've been sharing with people the secrets of getting laid to guys at the expense of yourself not getting laid again. Maybe? Well, because I that? reveal these secrets on radio for years, yeah. and all these women I know or who I meet and the, hear it, and they're like, oh, you, you got all the secrets, so mm-hmm. they won't fall for it. Oh, right? okay. So, oh, so I'm no. out. You're out. But, but other guys who don't have a radio show. My job is to get might... guys laid. That's okay. what I do. Teach me. <laughs> Teach, <laughs> Teach our listeners. He wants Teach to know. Us. Why not? Like, so what is the secret to getting laid? So what are the not, secrets? Not wanting to. Just not wanting to. Not you walk, wanting it? No, if you're too, I agree with that, too enthusiastic, it yeah. makes you nervous. If you walk into a bar and start rubbernecking, looking for chicks, they watch it, they see it. When mm-hmm. you walk into the bar, you do not look left or right, you walk straight to the bar and you get a beer and you act like nobody else is in there and they hate it mm-hmm. because they want your attention. And for mm-hmm. some reason, you walk past this beautiful woman with, without your tongue hanging out like every other guy. Mm-hmm. So you can't want it. You got to go in there and be like, you know what? I'm here to get a beer. Like you're above it all. <laughs> right. I don't need it. Maybe maybe I don't need it because I get it all the time. Maybe I don't need it because I don't get it ever, but I know I got to play it like this to <laughs> maybe get some tonight. That's totally true. That's um, how I got her. Th- I had yeah. literally given up on dating the night I, I met her. you give me a lap dance the a- first night. And I didn't care. <laughs> I was not nervous because that night, that night I, some, a girl had kind of crushed my heart. And yeah. I was like, I'm done with dating. I'm done trying. And my sister asked me, hey, you want to go meet this girl? Mm-hmm. We're going out to play pool. I was like, is she hot? She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> He's always willing to go out for hotness. I was like, look, fine. you scored, honey. I totally <laughs> did. But I, 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 if I had been excited or nervous, I don't think I would have done as well. Because that nerve kind of mm-hmm. gets me going, you know. So and she true. probably would have noticed I was too needy or something. Yeah. Well, I was in the same place. I didn't care. I was like, ugh, I had just broken Whatever. up with a guy, too. Yeah, but like, do you here. ever? And I, well, that's true. I'm really out. I mean, I did do a Truth or Dare game with him the first time we met in yeah. a bar. And he's like, why are we playing Truth or Dare? Yeah, she was up. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm weird, and that's what I do. <laughs> she is. That's fun stuff. I'm very though. forward. So, <laughs> so you got to not care. The other thing is... Women will try to put you to work as soon as they meet you. They yeah. try to give you a job. Oh, and yeah. the reason they do that is because if you accept the job, your marriage material, and you're not getting laid that night, and not for a long time. <laughs> if, if, if you do not accept the job and tell her, and tell her, hey, I don't work for you, you're getting laid that night. I guarantee it. Because the guy, go to a bar. There's going to be a guy watching purses and coats. Oh, hell no. <laughs> He's the worker. He's the marriage type. He's the, the husband. Guy, She's out on the dance floor with the guys who t- rejected the job, mm-hmm. dancing, having a good time. He's the friend. He's buying her drinks, too. Actually, he's watching he, her purse and buying her he's drinks. He's been friend zoned. This guy's getting laid. He's friend zoned. He he's friend zoned himself. Yeah, he if, he's been ha- if he took a purse and <laughs> sat there on the side. Women line, tell me, no. could you watch my purse? I'm like, no, I'm not married to you. Yeah. And I'm oh, not yeah. your boyfriend. She's either. the only person I'll watch a purse for. Thanks. That's it. <laughs> he is I'm married material, to but he's also bangable, so it's totally cool. Yeah, I'm all out. When I told that story on radio, Mm-hmm. The phone started ringing. Oh. And guys are like, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> I'm like, they're too I nice. know. You're a they're worker. You're too nice. You're too And that was my right. problem when I was dating. I was too nice. I was kept, I kept trying to be nice to them and be their friend. I don't want to be your friend, Angela. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> I am her best friend, though. You are. That's we the are reality. Best friends. But I wasn't trying but to be it, her friend. It's making it clear that you're not, you're I'm not, not just wanting you, to be friends. You're making it clear like, that no, you're I interested. I want you. I like yeah. you. We're, this yeah. is either going to the next level or not, but I yeah. don't want to be friends. Yeah. If a woman I'm hanging around or talking to calls me buddy, <laughs> I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, pal. Hey, pal. <laughs> hey, friend. What if she calls I'm not you your friend, buddy. What if she calls you Bo? Oh, oh God! We had a friend. No. Yeah. <laughs> she, she called her boyfriend's she called bow. Her boyfriend's bow. <laughs> well, once they call you buddy, you're not getting laid. Yeah, That's you're. you're, right. you're you, they, you've been friend zoned. She's made it a point to call you a friend without you know. She used the word buddy, but I, I already know what it is now. If she's just a cool gal that I'm wanting to hang out with, that's fine. But sure. I do like to hang out with women that I'm friends with. But I know that sex is on the table. Mm-hmm. Don't take you want a friend oh, with so some benefits. So you'll do friends with benefits, too? I do, but... I mean, it sounds like that's what you mostly do. You said you don't really do relationships. Oh, I don't do relationships. And I yeah. and I don't know that I really have any good friends. I just have women that I go out with on occasion. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I've got women that I 
go to plays with because they appreciate it sure. and hockey because they appreciate that. So whatever I'm going to, I know. That's a very two different sides of it. That's I know who to call. You know, you like the plays and you like the hockey. But I like to know <laughs> that, hey, man, you know, there could be some action here on yeah. the table too. And if they're, they know me. Mm-hmm. Now, if I take a woman on vacation, we are having sex. That oh, is yeah. my one. I'm like, listen, I'm going to Chicago. You're welcome to come, but we're fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, because yeah. if we're not, you ain't going. What else are you gonna do there? <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. But but I mean, I get it right out on the table, folks. And some mm-hmm. people are offended by that. Most people are not. Yeah. I think even in marriage, most people expect that. You know, like vacation sex is the best sex. So. Yeah. We went to Mexico. It, that yeah. Was really great. <laughs> that was a good time. Like good time. going. <laughs> could you imagine going on a cruise with a woman and not getting any? That would not be fun. Yeah. <sighs> I couldn't imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> I went on a cruise with reasons. my buddy and didn't get it, which was fine. Yeah. But you know what? There was a he group, never gave it up. No, there was a group of women there. There was one guy. Me and him were in the Michael Jackson dance contest. He of was course. a real old guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I came in. Actually, I won, but I pawned it off to him as the winner because he was really good. And he came to me the next day and he said, "Man, I need your help." And I was like, "Why?" He's like, "I'm here with a hundred senior women." And they're wearing me out. Uh He's like, they like you. Can you do some of them for me? Can you do some of them? Yes. It was like, that's what they they needed. He needed an extra penis in the (laughs) rotation. Exactly. And I was with my buddy. Did you help him out? I could. Back then, I was real religious and I I couldn't do it. But now, I'd have been like, because some of them, I mean, they were 55, 60, sure, but I was like, man, oh my some we of these were, chicks are looking good. We were in yeah. Mexico, and actually, uh, people would say, I'm 55, I'm 60. And I was like, holy cow, if that's 60, I, sign me up, because she looked, they looked great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. although, you know, to be fair, I think when you're having sex into your later years, you want to stay looking hot. Yeah, you kind of have <laughs> yeah. to keep yourself in shape <laughs> a little pretty. bit. Yeah. 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 I, I tell you what, a lot of people think, oh, you're having sex with all these people, it's disgusting. I th- Why is that disgusting? If if you've only had sex with your partner or whatever uh-huh. your whole life, okay, that's beautiful for you. Sure. I view it as you're really missing out. It's like reading one book over and over again. I, it's I, a good you know, book. <laughs> now, 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 once you've experienced life and had some sex with some people, if then you want to be with one partner, that's fine. But to mm-hmm. never know what anything else is like, like never done anybody else but that one person. Mm-hmm. I can't get into that. I was trying that. That was my first marriage. I was yeah. trying it. That was your first. Well, I think yeah. that's why a lot of couples. I, I've been having more couples recently talk to me about like opening up their relationship and trying the whole swinger or the poly thing. I think it's because of that. Like maybe they've only had one partner their whole life, and they're like, you know what? Let's see if there's some other books we can do together. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and I've done enough women that I could be with one. Matter of fact, when I've been in a relationship, I'm strictly them i don't even that's it you're monogamous yeah i don't look outside of it now i haven't been in one for seven years Mm -hmm. but when i do get in one which i probably never will again (laughs) i'm strictly like i'm strictly about them sexually but um i can see where if you haven't had the experiences you'll start wondering yeah Mm -hmm. you know wonder what somebody else is like you know i tell you what i do think back on my two wives Man, they were smoking hot. <laughs> and I'm so like, God, why did I give up that? So you had two wives. Your first one was six years. What six was the years. second one? So what was your second one? Well, this one was not very long, but I was very committed to making it work. That's yeah. why it lasted 39 days. Thir- <laughs> you really put some work into that one. I did, man. Well, I tell you what, I could have ended it on the first night. How long had you been together before? Well, I knew her my whole, like for 20 years. Oh, probably. okay. She was actually right. married to a buddy of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did, you know, it was very abusive. I didn't know he was an abusive guy, but oh. anyway, mm-hmm. um, and then one day out of nowhere, this girl comes running up to me, very excited to see me, which should have been a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody should be excited to see me. Uh, and she's like, oh yeah, hilarious. if a woman's excited to see you, yeah. there's something going oh, she like, wants in your problems. face. Yeah. Problems. yeah, nobody's ever excited to see you unless there's something she's else like, going on. She's like, Nathan? And I'm like... Yeah. No, it's true. It's Who the same with me. Women are never really excited to see you unless they're interested in you. That's it. Okay. Do you not know that? People it's are true. always excited to see me. So. Everybody wants to bang you, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's funny. I've he knows what known. I'm talking about. I've always known. Being a guy, you know there's a difference. <laughs> okay. There is. 100% is. There is. That's so good. anyway. Um, I didn't realize that she had had a breast reduction because they used to be huge, mm-hmm. and she was a big gal. But now she was like a, one of those ring girls that, for the boxing. That, mm-hmm. I mean, her body was just oh. Uh, so anyway, we dated about two months and got married. Yeah, I'd rather marry you than date you. Let's right. just 
Why well, just, well I, I just met you, you but we'll, I'll Why'd consider Why'd you marry it. so quickly? Because <laughs> I like to get married, hate each other, and get it over with. Let's not waste a bunch well, of time Well, you did dating. get it over well, with pretty quick. Yeah. 39 days. 39 days. What, what, what made it fall apart? What changed? Well, I, I, I'll tell you because I, I'm sure she's not listening to this. Mm-hmm. And I told her I'd never air her problems. But anyway. Too late. <laughs> on her honey. Now, here's another stupid thing I did. I, we mm-hmm. decided not to have sex till we got married. <laughs> what? That's why it was a rush why? job. Well, I didn't want. I didn't want. Was that her s- idea or yours? It was both of ours. I didn't want her good idea. sex to override <laughs> the fact that this lady might be a nut job. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but I'm you can like, also have the other side where you don't realize the sex is going to be terrible. Well, but or that, that you could have be no chemi- on. chemistry. That could in be worked bed. on. But and know. we talked about you have sex. to have some sexual aggression attraction to each other. Sometimes a, a confident person is enough to do it. It depends on it. Really depends on the person and how they carry them and their personality. Like yeah. I've I, I've had people who cheated on their spouses who were beautiful or handsome, but because the other person was really sexually aggressive and confident, that's who they cheated with. So it yeah. kind of just depends. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. anyway, on our honeymoon, I went to go down on her, mm-hmm. and I was down there for like two seconds. And she said, that's what my brother used to do to me all the time. So I'm like, uh, wait, that's uh, what I'm like, what is this the brother that you're saying I should meet because he's the best guy in the world and you're on the phone with him all the time? Yeah, that's him. He's the best guy ever. She's like, we he started molest me when I was little and then we just kept having sex in our teens and 20s consensual that's an awkward time to have that conversation see and i know i mean this stuff should have came out earlier but yeah. she didn't bring it out earlier because like she said i'm married to you now so you're stuck which was which the wrong not, thing to say is to that me. what she thought is like she should hide all her problems and herself Wait, was from she you? still having sex with her brother What's with that? you no but but she would be on the phone with him as soon as we got done Okay. I, I couldn't even get a boner anymore, folks. Like, yeah, that's I was gross. Done, I was done with this chick. I was like, this that's is disgusting. weird. She's got Stockholm Syndrome. Her family's ate up because they know about it, and they tell me how great he is. They didn't know I knew. Okay. And uh, she started falling apart because she had serious mental issues, but she di- she had built this world without me in it mm-hmm. as a single person where she was she was doing really well. Mm-hmm. But right. then when I moved into it, like stuff started crumbling. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I had to get out of there. I thought she was going to kill me. Yeah. Wow. So, that's right, she's tough. married again. I hope she's doing well. Yeah, fourth, hopefully. Fourth or fifth marriage. Yeah. Wow. That's intense. That's yeah. intense. That's intense. Yeah. Yeah. I did yeah. not expect that. So, <laughs> and, and I would say this. We're like broken got, right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you've got anything in your life that you need to tell somebody, do it you before think, you get that married. That you're dating or marrying. Mm-hmm. Or, and maybe do it before you get too serious. I know there's a fine line because you don't want to be putting your stuff out. You don't want to scare them off. You That's, don't. There's the matter fear of, fact, of rejection. Was, matter of fact, I was talking to a girl not too long ago, and she finally told me, she's like, by the way, I have herpes. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm like, I know that's tough because when do you tell somebody this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard thing because you not, don't want them. Because if it's the first date, a lot of people would just be like, that's it. Okay. Right, and now I I'm know out. about it. Maybe I'm an idiot and I go posting it on Facebook. Oh, this guy, you know. Right. So it's it's or a talk about it on a radio show. Like, right. right. Yeah. Like this. Well, I didn't like put this. her name out there. I didn't I put know. her name out. But I know. but the thing is, um, if you've got something serious to tell somebody, you need to find a time to do it. And and, and if you've been relatively like, early, if you've got mental issues seriously or stuff like that, mm-hmm. sexual abuse, it probably needs to be talked about. Yeah. Because well, it, it will play a factor. It Just will. to take and, it one up, I would encourage you to get therapy. You know, right. it's a good of thing. Because <laughs> with somebody like that, like the reality is she probably has PTSD from it. Oh, and yeah. she probably has a lot of fear and shame involved with it. So even telling you had to be hard, but you got to pick timing. Like that is not the time to talk about something. That's more like you're on a nice walk in the park. And you're like, hey, I need to share something with you. That's the time to share it. Right. Not yeah. when you're being intimate. But she knew, I think she knew I probably would have been like, you know what? It sounds like you got some stuff you need to work on mm-hmm. without me. Right. Because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. No, she would need therapy. I'm definitely. not signing on for this. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I I don't know. but Yeah, that's intense. The, the conversations, and, and that's why I'm not afraid to have any conversation about anything. I just mm-hmm. throw it out there. If you don't like it. We'll just move on in life. Well, maybe right. you're trying to figure out those red flags early, it sounds like. You know, you had a relationship that was well, kind of intense. Maybe you have a little PTSD I, from it. For, I, I tell you <laughs> what, I did start having panic attacks for the first My yeah. first wife had panic attacks, yeah. and I couldn't 
quite sympathize. Mm-hmm. I did. You I didn't would pull, understand them. I would pull over on the street for three hours mm-hmm. and sit there with her. But at the same time, I'm thinking, I mean, can you just get over this lady? <sighs> this is my thing. Yeah. No. You didn't but, understand it. But then when it. I had one, mm-hmm. I, I was like, okay, this like, is serious. Because oh, I think I'm thing. dying here. <laughs> it's a physical it response. It does. It feels like dying. Yeah. That's and what I, describe. I had two of them when I was contemplating how to get away from this chick mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I was sick of having them and I went to work one day and I was sitting there and I was like I'm calling off work right now and I'm going to get my stuff and I am out of there yeah. oh, and wow. that's what I did and I felt like a million dollars after I was gone yeah. Oh, yeah. you felt better You <gasps> felt. sometimes you just have to get out of the environment you're in you do you know yeah. don't, don't stay in a relationship that's not working if it's stressing you out and it's going to kill you Mm-hmm. Yeah, just bite yeah. the bullet and don't get let out it of kill it. you. No, just yeah. let it go. It'll be tough for a while. Or work on it. The reality Time is, pills. Angela has a job for a reason. Yeah, she's a true. marriage and family therapist and a sex therapist. And a lot of times, if people just when they're having those problems, if they just try to fix them, sometimes they can get through them. It's not perfect. It's hard though because people wait so long. So like, I agree. I obviously like my job. Yeah. <laughs> Right, And I help a lot of couples get to better places, but I will say how well people do depends on when they finally come mm-hmm. in. If if you come in like the average is seven years after problems start for wow. people to come in, I mean, think of how much bitterness and resentment's built up by then but before you have people to are getting see help. They're really committed to seven years <laughs> of dealing with the problem. <laughs> oh yeah, that's... Gosh. And then they're ready to get, yeah. Well, and that's what I'm saying. I wish people wouldn't see therapy as a weakness because I see it as a real strength. When people get in at a time where they still kind of care and have the energy, watch the amazing things they do. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've I've seen beautiful transitions with couples, but usually it's because they still care about each other. They're not like on divorce's door and like fix this, Angela. You right. can do it. I'm like, y- you're asking me to perform a miracle here. You guys yeah. have been hating each other for sometimes three, four, seven years. You know. Yeah. So, so it might take a little bit to PSA. fix that. That's my PSA. Go get fixed <laughs> early. <laughs> my other re- my other recommendation is, and I think I, I bet eight out of ten people who want to get out of a relationship do this. They go get somebody else to replace that person right away. Mm-hmm. Like do, mm-hmm. like or go, multiple people. It's like I'm thinking about leaving, so I'm going to go develop this relationship over here, and then I'll leave. Oh, no, I see. That ain't right. Oh, they they cheat. Pretty, yeah, they're yeah. basically cheating, yeah. or they they want the replacement already there, so that when they cut There's the like ties, they can jump right they're in. They're right in there. It's yeah. like don't do that. Just I, go to your mate and be like, you know what? I ain't feeling this anymore. It ain't working out. I don't want to work on it. I want to move on in life. Mm-hmm. It's over. I, I they now it might hurt a person, but mm-hmm. they will respect you later. No, well, they're gonna I, hate you I no matter what. Part of it well, is that true. It's scary. No, no, they're gonna hate you no matter what. But I think and you can that's, respect and hate somebody. That's why people are selfish when it comes to it, and they do those things because they see the bridge is gonna be burned either way. You're divorcing somebody. That is saying to somebody, "I don't like you to the point where I don't want you in my life at all anymore, yeah. and I want a legal document that says it." <laughs> that's how much. Brutal. And that's how brutal shit. divorce and I want <laughs> half your <laughs> shit <laughs> exactly so no matter what you're burning a bridge so yeah, I think a lot of true. people get selfish at that yeah. and they're like I'm gonna divorce anyway why don't I just ride this train a little bit it's a little easier to not get divorced right away look for another mate see what I can find out there and then yeah I they think make it's because people mistakes. are scared to be alone really right. you know like so people would rather stay in a crappy marriage than to be alone mm-hmm. and then they do that mm-hmm. and then somebody else in a similar boat comes around and then that's how it sometimes starts. it just sometimes they're seeking it out sometimes it just yeah. comes along sometimes yeah. it, they're, they're scared just... to be alone you got to work on yourself yeah you don't need to be in a relationship you got to be good with yourself first yep. and then the the person coming in the relationship is like the cherry on top. Right, mm-hmm. they can't be, you. They cannot be your world. The reason you exist, and no. they really can't complete you. You have no. to complete yourself. <laughs> that's right. No, I agree with that because I do see that a lot. Like that's what we would call codependency. You know, when people are kind of uh, broken, so to speak, and they're trying to get fixed with a relationship. But the truth is, you have that initial relationship high for about six months to two years, and then you go back to whatever your baseline was before. Mm-hmm. So basically. Okay, I was depressed. I met you. I'm happy for a while. Now I'm depressed again. And that's it. You know, then now you're two depressed people together. <laughs> so yeah, essentially, it's better it. It's better to work on yourself. And like you said, be a happy person. And you, it's more like a cherry on the top. I agree with that. Sure. <laughs> Most like people cherries. won't. Josh likes cherries. So. Yeah, like <laughs> Most people won't admit that they can't be alone. So I would say to those people, be alone for about a year and a half or two. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. we'll see if you don't mind it. Because most people I know, I know a lot of guys and girls. If they break up, 
they're with somebody every two weeks. They got a new one. I mean, yeah. they yeah. cannot make they cannot make it two weeks without having somebody. It's like they're not something ain't right. Do they with seek them. it out, or do they they already have suitors that are chasing them? I think waiting they, for it. I think hmm. I think a woman especially can go to a bar and have a boyfriend the next day. Yeah, I, I really do. I or think they a just lot change of, their status on Facebook to not in a relationship and anymore, then and then boom, they get a bunch of messages right. from the guys who've oh, been of following. People them. have been tracking them. Oh yeah, <laughs> and no, no recycle. Oh, you got creepy guys tracking you. Good lord. <laughs> oh, bet. I get a lot. I'm not going to say it because I don't want them to hear it if they are <laughs> listeners. But good lord, <laughs> some of them. Come well, on. At least I mean, at least I'm good at just explaining that sex therapy is talk therapy. I mean, I think a lot of people are misunderstanding what a sex therapist is. They're like, I need to be I around. I love her. you so I much. Had somebody send me pictures and like constantly yeah. say I love you, and I was like, I just forgot how to. Block. I gotta tell you, I misunderstood a little something. Maybe, I don't know where I got this, but see, hmm. I thought you guys did this show naked. Oh, what? very disappointed. <laughs> there. That that was word on the street. Did no. you really? No, you didn't. You're messing around. It's funny, it's but funny. people have called me and asked, "Do I have to get naked in your office?" And I'm right. like, "No. Why no, would you get not, naked?" And he, this then isn't the dentist. And then they'll say, "Can I?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm always naked at the dentist, walking around like a duck. I don't know why. What? The dentist? Yeah. I Everywhere. Know. Every time I go to the doctor, I end up naked and walking like a duck. I swear. I to do you. that at the mechanics. <laughs> See, that's why I'll never come to her because it, I'll be naked walking like a duck. Nope, you I don't get naked just, in her it's office. It's just for the story. Nope. Yep, nope. yep, yep. No naked in her no, office. No, but they're misunderstandings. But I agree. I do think that like most women probably could find somebody quickly, um, but not everyone. I mean, there some people really just want a one night stand. So I, right. I would say I would say maybe it's easier for her to or get like a one night stand than a relationship. Or like somebody who's friends with benefits kind of thing. Like, so you said you're. You wanted to talk about a little bit of dating in your forties. Like, yeah, what's, what's the difference? Like? I don't know. I, I I don't think I could do it. Yeah. I, I I I don't think I'm capable of dating. I wouldn't know how to start. So you don't date. You just no. have friends with benefits I, a little bit. I hang out. You hang out. <laughs> this is what I do. That's dating. Now some people. Now well, you I go to dinner. That. Oh, well, I'll go to dinner. Okay, that's we'll, a date. We'll go on. We'll hold hands. That's we'll a kiss. date. So that's a date. Right. It looks like we're. Together. But you're not in a relationship. No. That's dating without not being in a relationship. I don't like though. calling it dating. It's just going on a date. I like calling it hanging out. That's fun. (laughs) Which most women are totally against that, especially older women. Yeah. They're like, "Uh, we are dating. And I'm like, it's so stupid. Like, I'm dating all these women. Yeah. No, I hang out with a lot of people. Sure. If we're dating, I've discussed it with you, and I'm only dating you. Like, no, that's dating exclusive. Well, so that's but that's it's just labels. We're going steady. If you want to call it hang out, that's fine. It's a label. But (laughs) so hanging out in your 40s, what's that like? Hanging out. <laughs> I, that was I good, mean, Josh. It's, I mean, I like it. Like, you like it? Um, Do you prefer now being single versus being married? Oh, yeah. I would yeah. never be married again. Um, no. I don't think I could ever be in a relationship again. I almost did a few months back. I really like this girl. She's great. Mm-hmm. But uh, she was like, you know, what about being in a relationship? And I had to go home and think of it. And I think about it. And I was starting to have him... <laughs> Anxiety, real bad. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm done. You're anxious about I'm it done. immediately. You're like, oh, it. that's not gonna pan out. I don't out. know how to do it. Like, when do we t- do we have to hang out every week? Do do we have to talk on the when phone every night? When you're in a night? relationship, yeah. the, those are the things that come with it. Like, yep. I have I to can't. talk to her every day. He has talked to me every day. But actually, how hold on. Text she takes the day. all of my time. I do. I do. <laughs> See, if I I'm not busy and she's not busy. We're around each other. That's it. I can't be home. Tonight is actually one of the few nights that I get on my own because she is at choir. choir. Oh. Yeah. So I actually get a night off. I just don't like talking on the phone. I have for to pick the baby hours, up, so I you know. know. I get I get a night with my daughter. So. No, that's cool. Yeah, that's But awesome. yeah, like talking on the phone for hours at a time and stuff. I can't do it. I want to yeah. break the phone. Um I don't like listening to somebody breathe. <laughs> If, if we're if we're let's talk. If, Why are you if we run out to of stuff? Because we have nothing else to talk to. After well, then two say hours. goodbye. They don't like that. They see, that's, wanna, they wanna see, hold on. Sleep with hold you on. on. The oh, air. That's God, that's the er, that's the like teenage dating. That's the teenage like that's the early part of, of a relationship. I think people are Im- like even forty and fifty year old people are immature. They want to be on the, the phone. Dating. My mom is is uh, back in the dating game. She's mm-hmm. in her sixties, and. It's the same stuff as being a kid, man. Yeah. It's the same stupid oh, yeah. stuff. Like, it's like I like you. Do up? you like me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check box. Yes, Yeah, you no. have to put a check box. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just this, it's totally immature stuff, and I just don't, I mean. So what do you prefer to that? You prefer hanging out. What, what does that involve? I prefer, let's hang out tonight, and like, if I don't talk to you for six months, I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have to call you the next day. You don't have to call me. 
Do you make it very clear so up like front it, to any of your... It's really just let's ha- live our lives. If we want to cross paths here and there, that's fine. But no, like, you're required to or you're mad at me. Yeah. Which and you make you make it clear to them up front that that's what you're looking for. Another thing I make clear, and I sound like a complete asshole. <laughs> I know I do. But I'll say, listen, you're going to think... I'm, I'm telling you I don't date. And you're going to think I'm the... That's what you tell every other girl. And that well, she's I'm, the exception. I'm the exception. That's because romantic comedies do it all the yeah. time. Vince Vaughn had Vince a whole Vaughn career based on never that. I never want to be with a commitment. And then he always like, oh, I love you oh, anyway. You're around. the one who changed me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't change. And you will not be the exception. I just tell them that right off. Yeah. And and you know what? Sometimes they get hurt because they really did think they, they really did. I think, think women want to challenge. <laughs> but, but they'll say this. I've had a lot of girls tell Have me. Have you had them fall in love with you? I'm like. No, I don't think I let it get to that point. But yeah. I've had a lot of them go, you know what, Nate? I'm hurt. But it's my fault because you told me yeah. before we ever hung out. Mm-hmm. And I did it anyway. She didn't. They didn't believe you. They did not believe mm-hmm. me. And I mean, I'm not that great a guy. I live with my mom. You seem like a great guy. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Come on. Aww. Oh, thanks. Don't, I mean, sh- I, don't shoot the yourself exception. in the foot. I'm gonna take this Come on. No, you love me I, now. Josh is definitely marriage material. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm great in the sack, too. <laughs> watch, up. watch my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like, I wouldn't want to be talking with somebody that I can't, like, why Why we love each other is we can just talk for hours to yeah. each other. I mean, we do the stupid podcast together. We yeah. just talk, you know. We, but We never shut up. We never shut her. up. Especially me. I've got a lot yeah. to say. But I think, you know, if you have some somebody like that then it's worth hanging out but if you really have lost i mean if it's only been two weeks and you don't have anything else to say i mean what's the point you these yeah. are people you got to talk it's to like forever. why are you calling me again <laughs> well some women will say why would i hang out with you when i know it's not going anywhere and i say i don't know because you want to go see wizard of oz at the fox in the nice dinner yeah like and they're that's like, like saying but wh- we're never gonna be together and i'm like no first of all i don't even know you mm-hmm. but no i don't date that's I mean, like saying why would i go see a movie if it's going to end, then right. I'm not going to still be watching that movie. Right. Mm. Well, no, you can still enjoy the movie. Right. And then you can never call the movie again. Right. And yeah. and I don't require <laughs> sex from these people either or anything. Yeah. I, I sure. just like the company of a woman. Yeah. Especially if she enjoys what you we're You like doing. to spend time with people. I like to spend time with people. It doesn't have to be sex. I mean, I the majority of times when I go out with women, it's not sex. Sure. Um, if they're giving me the green lights... Which we talked about. Yeah, that. Yep, green lights. What's the green lights? I don't know. Well, I don't know anymore. <laughs> you don't know anymore? <laughs> I thought, okay. I thought them going home and being butt naked in your bed was a green light, but apparently it could not be. Wow. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> no, if they're going to be naked in your bed, that's pretty Come green. On. That is a pretty but green light. It can turn light. red real quick. All sure. that I said is that just make sure you're actually verbally getting consent. Don't just assume because somebody's coming home with you that they're trying to have sex, because sometimes right. they're not. Sometimes no, they're you not. just want to cuddle on the couch sometimes and watch Dateline. Sometimes people date do want right. to cuddle that's with right. Dateline. Right. This is what I want to But do. I mean yeah. you you can just put it out there and I talked about flirty consent which is just hey you want to you want to get busy you know you're making it sexy you're making it fun but it doesn't have to be um it doesn't have to be blank or quiet. Like I think people are are weird about consent instead of just putting it out there and saying, "Hey, I, I think you're sexy. You want to go make out?" It's they're so uncomfortable talking about sex that they can't even talk about it when they're trying to get it. Exactly. And I think that everybody needs to get more comfortable just putting it out there. So it's good you put it out there up front because then it's like, okay, they know what they're getting into. Right. Yeah. Although I'm going to say most women would want commitment. <laughs> I understand. Like We, we date understand to marry. That. That's how we are. I think yeah. guys do too. I think <laughs> most Yeah, guys, most, most people. people aren't like me. I mean, I'm, I've got probably big time mental problems. No, you're fine. <laughs> you, just, you just, you had marriage, you had long relationships, and I don't think you liked them. I don't yeah. like them. I yeah. hate them. Uh, I like being single, man. I do what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a daughter, so obviously I, I have... You have your own commitments. You have spread your yeah. seed. <laughs> yeah, yes. I've so we'll talk about that, actually, <laughs> we in a should, moment. We should. Yeah. Ask. What's, uh, so how old's your daughter? One. She's one, one. years old. I'm so, more worried about my mom and daughter than any other woman. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. So it's like I don't, I don't need to divide my time over there. Mm-hmm. I've got them two to worry about. I'm, I've got a career starting. Mm-hmm. I'm not even marriage material. I mean, <laughs> unless you've got a career and can support a family, you know, I'm not a, I'm not marriage material anyway. So why would you be interested in me? That's a huge turnoff, lady. <laughs> that you're interested fact, in him? I told a lady. Hey, one time. Like you have terrible judgment. Why would I want to be with you? One time <laughs> I, I had lost my job because I got hurt. I was on state aid. Mm-hmm. I had no job. 
nothing. I had lost everything. And this girl was really interested in me. And I'm like, the fact that you're interested in me mm-hmm. is a huge turnoff. Yeah. I got nothing going, lady. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I mean, you should be looking for a guy that could at least. What'd she say? Bring, Oh, it doesn't. None of that matters. I'm like, it should. It should. It really should. Bit. I'm on welfare. <laughs> I have no job. It I shows... have no house. I have no car. I've got zero. Lady. Well, you know, there are multiple reasons people marry. Actually, and the only one you're listing is financial. That's actually what you're listing. And there's women. That is a big one for women. So her not being interested in that being a problem is it's a, a weird. It's a pretty high flag. priority for most it's, women. It is. Well, she's but not interested. There's also in the bills come how you treat them. Mm-hmm. Sense of humor. How good you are with kids. There's so many different... Holding a conversation. Being, being a able to friend, have a conversation. Being the kind of guy who when you lover. come home on a Valentine's Day has flowers there. Mm, hi. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Romance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things. Sure. But I agree. I think you should have a job. <laughs> yeah. That is kind of a big one. It's not like I'm shallow. I think you need to have a job. That is not shallow. Mm-hmm. That's... That's legitimate thing. I mean, I like my woman to have a job too because I don't want her calling me all day. Yeah. Like, oh, I, she needs to be busy. Be, I, I like a busy person. Yeah. <laughs> we should all be busy, man. Yeah. I remember when my wife didn't have a job, my first wife, like, I would come home to all these things I need to work on because she's been watching these dumb shows all day, like Oprah and Sally Jesse. Mm. And I'm like, you got way too much time on your hands, like way too much. What do you mean things that you need to work on? Well, like, Oprah said that well, Oprah's um, always if you're t- late, oh, if you're three minutes late coming from home, home from work, you're clearly cheating. You, you've probably got a family across town. For it's three like, minutes? Oh, that's a lot. That's, that's a, a lot of time stretch. to spend with a family. <laughs> <laughs> too, <laughs> too much. Like, what? You can't have too, too much her own time head. on your hands. Yeah, that's if you have funny. too much time on your hand, you get in your own head. Isolation's not good for your oh, health. It is. It is not. It's really bad. Actually, we would say that that contributes more to depression than anything else is being isolated, not having social connections. They actually say one of the biggest factors in psychosis yeah. is isolation. Isolation. Wow. Which is mm-hmm. scary. That which means, if you, to have social that means connections. if you put somebody in, in solitary confinement, you can make You're them creating psychotic. Psychosis yeah. by doing which that. Which is scary. Which is. Partly is what's going on with Facebook too. Is people aren't making real connections. Yeah, that's, they're making you're these still fake isolated connections, yeah. but you're actually still isolated. Like you get more out of a phone conversation with somebody than you do out of liking mm-hmm. somebody's post. Yeah, and that's actually the new Oprah. The the be on the Facebook all yeah. day and then yeah. And what's that's that? The new is, Oprah? That's the new Oprah. <laughs> what women used to do, they would watch Oprah all day and soap operas. That's not this generation. It's this more generation is social Facebook media and, and Facebook. And what's yeah. that is on Facebook, and I go through this all the time. I talked to these. People have contacted me. I don't know how, but we start a rapport. We talk for two weeks a month. They love talking about meeting up. Mm-hmm. They're never going to do it. Yeah. They'll even message me. God, I wish you were here tonight. Okay, yeah, but I've invited you out 17 times and you don't accept. So you don't really. You yeah, like you talking about me being there, but we're never going to meet. Yeah. It's like this whole. Fa- they're hiding behind social hmm. media and they're never going to meet you because they can't do it. Because hmm. they're scared. I, Maybe they're I don't scared. know. Scared they cannot hold a conversation. They're I I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's probably it's, weird, it's probably like, fear, a little like, anxiety. You don't know, quit bothering me if you're not yeah. if we can't meet up ever in life. Right. This is stupid. Mm-hmm. Right. Long long ago before we were together, I did some of the online dating. You stuff. dated before me? I How dated dare before you? you? I love you, honey. You exist. <laughs> Revelation. New. Right? See, I do find he out always, something new about he her. Pretends that he doesn't know. Okay. I so know, like totally. when I used to do online dating, I used to tell people you need to meet right away yeah. because you can have this whole conversation and be like, oh, all that stuff. Oh, I wish you were here. Blah blah blah. And then, then you, you meet, meet in, person. in person, and you're like, they're. You're a dud. I can't talk to you. You're yep. boring. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't it doesn't or, count to me. Or a lot of times they also like make themselves out to be different. Like they give you yeah. a photo from ten years sure, ago. Sure, there's catfishers and stuff like well, what's, that. What's, oh yeah. What's, what, what it's most annoying is when they put a photo from ten years ago. Oh yeah. It's like okay, I understand you really liked how you looked in college. That's mm-hmm. great. But it's <laughs> ten years later. Show pounds. me who you are, <laughs> and that's fine. It's not about that. It's about representing yourself as who you are because you feel like you're lied to by somebody if they do that oh yeah it's a bait and switch Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know what i do my facebook photo is us actually from four weeks ago here's here's what i do (laughs) you have the same facebook photo you use the same photo actually i don't even think you realize that because it's me and you I like you. You're crazy. <laughs> what were you saying? You never go on my Facebook anymore. <laughs> uh, here's what I like to do, and I think this is reasonable to make people comfortable. I always say this. Let's meet, 
for 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, let's do meet like for a coffee. Fi- let's meet Something for 15 easy. minutes at yeah. McDonald's. Have a tea, right. and th- we do not go past 15 minutes. We yeah. we talk. That's his rule for a new stop movie. Stop it. <laughs> that is. I have a 15 minute rule for a Netflix movie that we just randomly find. That's, 15 that, minutes. That's reasonable. I think you, a person you, should have the same number. You know? Yeah, because what if you don't like each other? You don't want to waste a whole hour or two right. with somebody that you really can't see. You, right. you don't want to go to the Fox and hate this part. Well, you're not going to talk at the Fox anyway, but you right. don't want to commit to... To an hour long dinner. Right, and we don't get along. Let's do 15 minutes. No matter how good a time we're having, let's stop it at 15. Yeah. Okay. And, that's smart. And hmm. let's do, but, but still, it's like... Okay, that sounds great. Okay, are you available Friday? Yeah. Well, let's do it then. Oh, but you know, blah blah blah. Here we go with the excuse. They always find some it reason. It ain't gonna happen. I I make when people make plans with me, I make other plans because I know they're not gonna hold them anyway. How do you normally meet your hangout buddies? Uh, well, I mean, or I'm ladies. at a lot of events. I'm out. Yeah, you I'm meet in person mostly, or do you online? Yeah, well, what usually happens is I'll meet them out. And they'll get a hold of me online. I see. Mm. Hey, Nate. I we met, met at this thing. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah, yeah. And then I'll, I'll just go from there. I, I don't know. Maybe once or twice in my whole career on Facebook, which is mm-hmm. who knows how long, I've actually messaged a woman. I don't do that because yeah. I know they got two hundred other creeps messaging them. They do. I don't do it's it. So annoying. Uh, <laughs> now, now, what's weird is this gal messaged me the other day, or I messaged her for some reason because she had already poked me like eighty times. <laughs> So I messaged flag, her, and she's like, uh, do I know you? I'm like, you've poked me 80 times. Oh, okay. I'm like, can we... I kind I of just, expect a phone like, call after being poked I that know. many times. I'm like, can we, like... I just thought we could chat, because you just poked me do all, every day, all you? day. Maybe maybe it was, like, a dog hitting it or maybe something. It like, that's a random... No, 80 so times. Weird. 80 pokes? I get... Oh, I've got... I get that from all kinds of women, but I didn't even like, know you could still get poked on Facebook. I've like, never poked anybody. To me, if you poke, if you poke, <laughs> I don't me, even know how to poke somebody on Facebook. Yeah, how do you? Poke? I like, should I be allowed it, to mess. Like it used to be, yeah, like it was a so. prominent button on their like, page. You know, but, it's like a winky face, right? Ah, you yeah, know, you assume they're say, trying to say hey. Yeah, you, I just yeah. message people if I'm talking okay, online. Okay, is it like waving? I know how to wave. You can wave. Now. Yeah, they yeah. added the wave. That's a little less aggressive than. Poking? Yes. I think that's why they added the wave. Because like, like, if hey. I poke at him, he's right. going to be like, why are you poking me, dude? Right. But if I wave, it's like, oh, that's friendly. It's not as I, sexually I don't like it too, when guys poke stick me or them. wave. I hate okay. it. You don't like it when I wave at you? Well, not on Facebook. You haven't done <laughs> oh, on wave. Facebook. Okay. No, on Facebook. In person, like, a wave is like not I add, weird. This guy friend requested me yesterday. I mm-hmm. added him, and he was automatically waving at me. I'm like, no, man. I'm not waving back at you. This is so <laughs> weird. I don't actually like that Facebook automatically assumes I want to wave at somebody. Like when you when you're added as a friend on Facebook, it creates a message in your mm-hmm. inbox. It that, does? Yes, oh. it does. On your on your instant messenger that says you're connected with this person on there. I'm like, well, I know that. I just added them. It says, why don't you wave at them? I'm like, no. It's like, no, I just want to Facebook. Stalk I just want to. Right? Yeah, like, I just want to be Facebook. For, I don't, don't want to talk human to contact people. with no. these people no. in any way, shape, or no. form. I just want to compare it's... our lives and hope that mine is better. <laughs> But, but ladies, in all right? seriousness, a little if, bit. You, if you poke <laughs> a guy on Facebook, to me, you've given him the green light to message you. Right. I think so. I right. Think that's that's their way of saying, hey, talk to me. And 80 times is the serious green light. Like, yeah. Well, hold on. 80 times, you shouldn't want to message after that. That's a, <laughs> it's that's like, a bit you much. Know, she's, she's pretty. She's, she's, she guys must have been pretty. a lot with yeah. her pretty woman. <laughs> Why I mean, did she, it take 80 pokes for you to message her? I That's I've got several like that. I just don't. I just yeah. don't do You're it busy. because I don't want to be a, a creeper. Yeah. And then this is the response I get anyway. Uh, do I know you? Is there any reason you're messaging me? Well, you poked me 80 times, lady. Yeah, that does I mean, I she think that back? warrants a hi. <laughs> it What'd warrants a hello. I was like, well, you've poked me 80 times. And she's like, oh, oh, yeah. She forgot. I mean, do you poke that many guys? That, you know, <laughs> and now she wants to hang out. Oh, okay. She's she a, lives like two she's hours. She remembered. Away. She's a poke enthusiast. I'm hesitant to <laughs> drive two hours <laughs> that even to see off? this chick. I'm sorry. That's okay, Josh. We're mad at him. He's got this thing that reminds him to take his pills, and it goes, oh, chicka, 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 chicka. It's, it's so cool. loud. Well, it catches your attention, It definitely it? does. It used to just beep, and then I would never take <laughs> now, my pills. Now, with these pills, do I need to be out of here in 30 minutes? No. no. It's no. Tylenol. I don't know. I think for my back. Are okay. you talking about, like, Viagra? <laughs> yeah. Cialis? No. He's got to take his Viagra. We got to <laughs> no, go I'm bang. No, I'm good on that. It's no, hard as a rock. Fine. <laughs> it's hard right now. <laughs> what? Why is it hard right now? We're talking about poking angels. When I was a kid, aggressive poking I tell you what, when I was a teenager, Teenager. It was hard all the time. Well, most teenagers. It was. Know how it the is. Dog, I'm and like, it wasn't. It, it wasn't hurt, good though. either, right? No, the because head would hurt. Mine would get hard, 
in the middle of algebra. Oh, God. Because there was a blonde-haired girl sitting <laughs> right there, that? and she was fully clothed. She wasn't inappropriate in any way. With it was just, hormones. there's a female within five feet of me. It's full mast. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to. <laughs> there's a female. Go and towards me. And I didn't want it to be that way, because immediately I would be, like, uh, like curled up, her. like, go away, oh, Timmy. Oh, my goodness. Go away. Timmy. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> like, that's my dick's name. She named it, actually. I named what it long it? ago. Timothy. Timothy. Uh, Timothy. Uh, yeah. It's a great name. It's reasonable. Yeah. It's reasonable. Do you have a name for your penis? No, I don't. Thor. Thor. <laughs> Thor. <I'm> Thor. <laughs> no, um, but yeah. By Odin's hammer. <laughs> I love it so much. But now hammer. I wish it. Now it takes more. Yeah. Like it. It does. T- like if I was in a room full of naked women, I probably wouldn't have a boner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it depends on it. I just want because I'm like I, I'm like man. You know, I need the. I don't know. You probably need a connection. Now, too. if I make out with a chick, I'm hard as a rock. Right. Well, making out is sexual, of course. My yeah. gosh. Uh, but I mean, want to get me going? At this uh, age, you've seen a lot of naked down women. My throat. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. A good kiss will do it. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, are people better kissers at forty? You think, or is it? it does it just still depend? Oh, I think it's a learned. Th- I think you can get good at it. Well, of I course you I'm can. Oh yeah, fifteen-year-old girls are not very good at it. No. <laughs> and I, I, that's from when I was fifteen. Oh my gosh, not Josh, now. The way you sounded. I know <laughs> that was on purpose. I know he totally does that on but purpose. But now, <laughs> now women are much better kissers. Sure, like, well, definitely. you would hope they would. But learn when you're some. first, I'm sure I was terrible at first. Well, like, I I'm sure I was all spitting in her mouth. marriages and... forever, and they don't improve. They literally have sex the same way they did when they were teenagers. Probably because they're not talking about it, getting feedback. I know. I Orals know. of an art. You yes. got to be good. Yeah. You got to really be interested in. You got to be able it. to do this. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's important. Yes. yes. The ladies love that. The they, it do. makes them spin on their heels. Well, no, yep. Our tongue will never be faster than that damn vibrator, though. No. No, but that doesn't mean but you can't do a good it's job. It's self lubricating. Mm-hmm. True. And mm-hmm. it's warm. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, There's a lot just... of good things about it. <laughs> I'm and a proponent so of oral. He's a I think proponent it's a great, of giving it's a and receiving oh, oral sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I'm a fan of wearing women's inner thighs like earmuffs. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, yes. It works out. <laughs> yeah. I think we all are. <laughs> <laughs> no, some guys don't. They think it's gross. Oral Why? sex? Giving oh, oral sex? I guess disgusting. there are some, some women do too. That way. Some women feel that a way A lot too. of women don't want you down there because they're like, do you know what comes out of that? I'm like, I don't care, man. Like, I do know. I don't care. Yeah. It tastes good. Yeah. I think it's because women worry about how they smell or how they look. It goes mm-hmm. back to this like shame they feel. And like some women have never even looked at their vulvas. And, you know, one of the things I'll teach women is like, why don't you look at it and try to find it as a beautiful thing? And, and there mm-hmm. are these books now that put out like vulvas as flowers to try and show like, no, this is a pretty thing. You know, mm-hmm. like it doesn't have to look terrible or feel you don't have to feel terrible about your body. But I think it comes from that, like them worrying in their head. Am I pretty? Am I good enough? Does he going to like it? Does it smell? And really, they could live down there. Men oh, yeah. love your vagina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes it can, but you can always jump in the shower and, and that's clean true it up too. a bit. And if you're douching, ladies, uh, I mean, you're you're killing all the good bacteria down mm-hmm. there. That'll the, make the it vagina a problem. You really self, shouldn't. The vagina is a self-cleaning oven. It mm-hmm. is. So mm-hmm. just keep it clean, but you don't got to be doing all these douches and stuff. I think a lot of young women do that. Um, you know, I've never used the self-cleaning thing on my oven. Like, what do you do? You just turn <laughs> it on? Yeah, and you just hit a button. It'll take care it of it. You may have to, you know, just put maybe some scrape stuff it in out it. a bit after. We'll maybe scrape, scrape it, it out a little bit. I've never tried it. Anyway, <laughs> anyhow, back to the self cleaning oven. Self cleaning oven of a vagina. Oven of a vagina. <laughs> yeah. No, it is true, and I think that some of it. This goes both ways, though, for males or females. Sometimes, if you stink, I think it should be comfort. You should be comfortable and casual enough to be like, mm-hmm. "Hey, let's go take a shower that's, together." That's why you have to be comfortable talking about sex. Yeah, because you have to be able to say, "I need this," and it's not a rejection of you or you it's know, just a rejection like, of that stink, yeah. <laughs> which is okay. Stink. Which it first thing in the morning? I just reject that stink. First thing in the morning, everybody has a little bit of stink down it. there. Everybody smells Because you've a gone. Little, it's okay. if, if you're like me, I shower every morning. So if you go all day and all hey, night, everybody be like you're Josh. Have he showers bit, every day. Yeah, if you're gonna be as awesome as I am, you're gonna shower every day like an adult. It. Like an adult. I, I don't dip my face in the aquarium. I'm not rejecting the aquarium. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, <laughs> it's okay to just wash it up a bit. I just want to look no, at it. First. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I'm we, dying. I, I shouldn't have to have this conversation with women. Mm-hmm. You guys should know about your vagina. Investigate mm-hmm. your own vagina. Yeah. I've spent yeah. years investigating them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've spent countless hours online researching. Research. And I, my findings are 
Interesting to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. Yes, oh, big already. fan. I tell you what, my, beautiful. I had a girlfriend back in 07 who was like a Barbie doll. She mm-hmm. was beautiful, but she was embarrassed about her vagina because it had major beef curtains. I mean, mm-hmm. you could pull them up around your ears. So almost. she had a, a I large, love them. large labia. The labia is normal. Can go I big, yeah. small. It's a, okay. L- yeah. A lot of women have big labia, and it's okay. That's normal. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I, I mean, I prefer a big clit too. Yeah, because it's easier to get to. But you can find it. You, <laughs> can, find it. you can find, find it, guys. You can find it even if it's not as big. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you just have to dig and deep. It gets hard. Yeah, you get it hard. See, yeah, it that, does. Oh. It, we get bad. It becomes jobs. stimulated. It's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think guys <laughs> see guys have not taken the time to properly study a vagina, mm-hmm. and that's why they're not good at what they do. Well, that's it's why hard. their wife's like, okay, you can come up now because. Well, the reality is, it's hard to study it. the 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 way to study it is trial by fire Mm -hmm. you have to get in there and do it Mm -hmm. and (laughs) and it's not just doing it because if you just get down there and start doing it you're not going to be good at it no and the only way you're going to get better at it it's not by watching porn it's not by somebody telling you about it it's by your partner saying try this or don't do that that hurts or oh do more of that that feels good or do lighter and angela is actually really good about saying what she wants because Mm -hmm. i mean you've met her i talk about sex all day guys like that too we love that we love a woman who is commanding and knows what she wants that is hot as hell well because what what i see a lot of guys struggling with is women will tell them what they don't want not what they want right and so it's very confusing and it, it's I, only I, shut she shuts shut you down the, it's like shutting a door in your face mm-hmm. so it's like okay well what should i do you know like give us ideas and so i always tell my couples this like try to guide people towards something and you don't even have to know what it is it's and about experiment and on too. the opposite side it's also up to the women to know what makes them feel good? And I, I remember when I was younger, a lot of women would say, oh, no, I don't masturbate. That would be dirty. Oh, no. And I'm like, well, if you don't do that, how are you going to tell me what you want? Because right. you don't know how to make yourself feel good. How are you going to teach me? Right. Yeah, I do encourage women to masturbate. Men too, but I don't think I, I don't have to encourage, have to encourage them. Men are pretty that. good at it. Oh no, I just got one out. <laughs> good to go. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but women, I think you do. I agree. You know, like if you learn what you like on your own, then it's easier to tell a partner. But you also need a partner who's totally open to asking, because mm-hmm. like you may be somebody who's masturbated, but if he doesn't, if he's not willing to take feedback, then it's hard to also tell. I would also say this to women: give your guy some feedback mm-hmm. as far as you're having pleasure. Because a lot of women are like, oh, I'm embarrassed to scream and shout. Well, if I'm eating you, I'm like, man, I've been eating this girl for 20 minutes. She hasn't made a noise. <laughs> I mean, oh, it felt great. I just didn't want you don't to say know. anything because I was embarrassed. I'm like, what? I, give us some feedback. Give us feedback. So we, we know love it. to hear it. Like, if I, if if I can I make eat... her squeal, it makes me feel so good. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it makes my confidence soar, and oh, it makes me, me try even harder. Yeah. That's the point, is if you give feedback... I'm going to go out get, and eat all kinds you, of pussies, you'll have I'm good a, at it. You'll have us throwing you up on the roof doing stuff. Like, you'll get some He-Man shit out of yeah, us. Man. Like, really. Like, you, I think feedback's... I important. think it's sad that some women, for some reason, they've been raised to not respond and react mm-hmm. to pleasure mm-hmm. yeah what is the who's telling them this i think it's slut shaming i, it's I the, think some it's, of it is culture it's what we were, we're talking so about how we were sexy we, like we were all raised religious and yeah. we were raised yeah. not to talk about sex so you can't and that have in, sex you can't that like includes sex, you can't even liking person. it yeah liking it is dirty like it is like we we were watching <laughs> something and they had a mormon pastor who was going on the air and oh talking about this, this was whether <laughs> it was it was Joel McHale on yeah. Netflix. He has a new show. And it was this Mormon pastor talking about whether it is masturbation if you touch yourself and you don't come. And it's this pastor talking about it. Not so he can teach you to masturbate, so he can teach you how to feel shameful about yeah, yourself. about what so you're he, doing. So you know, even if you don't come, Make sure you still got that shame going, fellas. So, you know, even if you're rubbing your penis Man. on a pillow, you're Jesus still is gonna masturbating. Hate it. You're I still making years. Jesus <laughs> cry. Oh, I felt shameful for years, and I wouldn't, and I would think I was turning the corner on it because I wasn't coming. I was like, okay, I really didn't masturbate tonight. Oh, oh really? Wow. You know, what I was doing was so that's edging a thing. because three days later it was like blue. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna come out <laughs> all over the in my face and everything. You're like, oh my god. Yeah, well, I was banging pillows, anything. Yeah. Well, and that's the point. Couches, Your body needs to come, and if you carrots. don't masturbate or have sex, it'll just do it in its sleep. There, are, I know forty year old men who are having nocturnal wet dreams ejaculation because yeah. because they don't nocturnal feel emissions. comfortable just be their own sexual person. It's, yeah, it's strange. And I don't think that's good for uh, people. You know, anytime you mix shame and sex, you end up having problems. So it's about, you know, just be yourself, enjoy sex, learn what you like, and talk to each other. And mm-hmm. you never know what's going to affect a person through life because I used to have uh, sheets with 
like women's faces on it. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's why I want to come on women's faces. Now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, every guy has that problem. <laughs> uh, well, well then hold on. Is that's why I want to come on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> ah, I got uh, it now. Uh, speed I'm racer. so sorry, Han this Solo. This guy is so into speed racer porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had Star Wars sheets. I really did. I love it. <laughs> It's funny. I think I just had white sheets, guys. <laughs> That's All what right. she said. She doesn't let you tan. Mm. Huh? That's true. I do like white him white. Oh, white. Yeah, yeah. You're a white boy. White as yeah. <laughs> No, I tan a little bit. He does. But we haven't seen the bit. sun in three months. No, we well, we went winter. to Mexico. We did. Get oh to yeah, see I got a little bit of days. tan, but it's already almost fading. Yeah, so. <laughs> already gone. I use the tan in booth. Oh, oh do really? You? Well, I don't want skin cancer, but mm. uh, you know I'll they say it's better I'll to just it. tan outside. Like you get more skin cancer with the booth. Mm. I uh, I hold a tan really well. Yeah. So once I tan, I'm like You're set. I'll hold it for two three months. Oh okay. Mm. But but you know, uh, tan fat is more attractive than I know. White yeah, fat. <laughs> I agree. If <laughs> you have, why a, I do it? <laughs> it's it's interesting, but I noticed that like when I get a little bit of a tan going, it looks nicer know, when you I'm have like, a little bit of a belly going. But the, when, when it's really pale, you can see all the cracks and wrinkles mm-hmm. and ri- oh, it's just maybe not it just as attractive. Out a little more. It does, but when you're tanned, it's like, oh, he's like a bronze Buddha. <laughs> I'm gorgeous. <laughs> you want to touch my belly and stick your face <laughs> on it, baby? <laughs> so that's the plan, guys. I, if you have a few extra pounds, just yeah, tan it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta work on trying to find ways to be attractive with your body type that's oh, it oh yeah of I'm course a big guy. i know it well the number <laughs> yeah. one thing you can do this is men and women yeah no matter what your body type is is to just go with it and be confident i'm and not try. saying go yeah. out in a two-piece bikini nope. but what i'm saying is just own it mm-hmm. yeah and don't worry about it man if i don't like it then i'm not gonna try to get on it mm-hmm if I, you know what I mean? It's well, like and just confidence is sexy, right? Yeah, it is. It's like just be yourself yeah. and have fun. I yeah. agree. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you're married, be confident because I know a woman right now that's cheating on her husband, and it's because he's a big, big time pussy. <laughs> Every time they get done having sex, he's like, "Was it good? Was it good? Tell me if it was good." Uh, he's always <laughs> like, "Are you gonna leave me? Are you gonna leave me?" Yeah, uh, they, clearly. Listen, man, you're messing up. Like, if I could talk to this guy, I would totally set him straight. Yeah. She is right so unattractive. Sex? Yes, she's so unattractive to him because he's a big old, big time puss. Yeah, you have to be confident. She's like, he has zero Even confidence. in your marriage. He thinks I'm leaving him all the time, which he's getting real close he's, to it because of this. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy a little bit there. I'm like, yeah. be confident, guys. Don't You don't have to be a jerk. Although it might also be that she's kind of been on her way out and he's noticed it. That, yeah, that does happen. She said, she said he did this when they were dating, but see, that's her fault. I mean, she, she yeah, married. she shouldn't have married. Yeah. I mean, the whole time they're dating, she, you know, he thinks she's leaving. I don't yeah. know who Somebody... said this. We watched something recently. Oh, it was, Why... it was Chris Rock, and he said oh, yeah. the marriages, or the problems you had at the beginning of marriage, are the same problems that you have later on. The problems you had when you were single are the yeah. same problems they're you have now. They're gonna be the same. Like if you had depression, then <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have them now. It's if like you if you have didn't do the dishes, then he's still then. not doing yeah. the dishes now. Exactly. <laughs> Right. Yeah, she, I'm never gonna volunteer to do the dishes. She has to I do ask have me to, to strong do arm and yeah. do it. But luckily, he likes abuse, so it works out. <laughs> no, <laughs> you should never no expect hitting. somebody to change. If, no, if you marry a guy and he's a freaking dirt bag with, with mm-hmm. his house, his house is a mess. Well, this is what you're gonna be dealing yeah. with. Yeah. Don't expect yeah. him. Oh, I'm gonna whip him into shape. No. Mm-hmm. Or if that you're a woman both who's ways. a hoarder, there are women I would who do the same. Never thing. marry a hoarder. Oh, oh my god. I'm sorry, and that that may be your life choice. <laughs> it's your I don't want to shame anybody hoard. for their life choice, but good god, I, I can't really stand that. I don't really think it's a life choice. I think it's one of those things people do in response I, to anxiety. I think it's but... more of a side effect of depression. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people don't like to be diagnosed. I so, know. Sorry, anyway. I can't diagnose people. Sorry, anymore. but you're so, depressed. <laughs> something that you think is cute while you're dating, like courting, you will hate them for after a few years. Of right? Life. If you think it's quirky, it's like, oh, uh, she's always doing that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's always, always telling me to that? shut up in public. Yeah, <laughs> so funny. Yeah, it won't be funny down the road, buddy. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Who's oh saying boy, these things. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're killing uh-huh. me here, man. She Who calls me that? names. <laughs> Why? Yeah, that would be terrible. No, you don't She's, want people who are abusive. Like, if, yeah, like, if they're abusive abuse. or shooting you. My husband. No, like we're joking. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, that would be terrible. Like mm. Somebody who carries a gun around, you know? <laughs> <They'll> <laughs> well, yeah, they're going to always gun. carry a gun, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. All right. Well, That's I think fun. we've covered a lot uh, here. Well, <laughs> I wanted to cover one last thing. Okay, So you said you you have a daughter. Mm-hmm. But you're not married, and you Mm-mm. you're not in a relationship with Mm-mm. them. How'd that come about? Yeah, oh, what happened? Just curious. <laughs> you know, you you go on a ghost tour with a gal, and next thing you know, you're having a little orb. <laughs> yeah, but you said you have a rule for dating. Like, 
Oh, I had a oh like a policy. Yeah, you had your policy. I had an anal and oral only policy. So you would yeah, only have oral and anal sex. Yes, that's it. But, stick it in the butt. But stick it in the one mouth. One thing leads to another. You get rocking and rolling. You get all passionate. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it's now you got a baby. It was one time. One time. One time. One time. He's that's how easy ladies. it is to get pregnant. But now you have a daughter. <laughs> See, I. You know what though? Unfortunately, and I don't recommend this um, to people who have sex a lot. Is I. Out of the times I've had sex, I've probably had unprotected 40, 50 times, which wow. is a big mistake. That's a lot. But yeah. I've had sex a lot, too, so you maybe, never got... maybe it's not as bad as you think. <laughs> uh, I mean, pretty good odds you don't have AIDS at that point. So. Uh, I, I probably got off. Wait, how many stuff, times, but... how many partners have you had? Uh, probably 300. Is that, is that a lot? Just broke him. Is that a lot? <laughs> that is a lot. That is. Yeah. Wow. I mean, there's not, not in a shameful way. No, no, no. no, no. I, I, just, I, mean, it's I just was. Person. I'm just surprised a bit. That's all. Oh, no. Well, I tell you what, when I. So, like, how many this I, year? You said it slowed down a bit now. Oh, it slowed down a lot. When I first got divorced, I moved in with my buddy, and he told me he had sex with 100 women. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I'm going to catch up with this guy. And probably within. I was having sex with probably nine different women a month. Mm-hmm. So I caught up real quick, and I told him, I was like, dude, I finally made it to the 100. And he was like, dude, I was lying. I've never had sex with, I've had sex with like five women. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, I thought. He, you thought you were in a race. With, I did. And I thought, he hadn't even left the no, freaking starting he's line. He's like, holy cow, dude. And I was like, oh, okay. So you re- but you're serious. He was oh, yeah. lying, but you're serious. Oh, I'm dead, you I think don't lie close to that. 300. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> now I never tell. I I don't know who's gonna listen to this, but sure. I when women ask me, I mean I don't I lie. You, you don't tell them. Like, what do you tell them? I mean, really? <laughs> yeah, because man, I, I'm not trying to. Cock, I cock block myself enough. I'm yeah. not gonna do it when I'm right on the verge. Yeah, because no, you hear 300, you're like, you're like, whoa. whoa. Yeah. Well, and you know what? But that's us being judgy, right? Like, I mean, no, if you have 300 no, partners, I, I've 300 just partners, it just threw me off. Yeah, that's yeah. all. I've never had an STD, but I know a lot of my friends who haven't had near the partners I have who have. Yeah, yeah. and they're like, oh, I just get rid of it, and I'm thinking. Okay, that's uh, I, some you, of them you can, can be but I don't think of. we should be going out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, going. Oh, I can get rid of most of them, so I'm gonna most take of chance. them, but no, not a couple it's of them. Better to use the condom so, until you know. <laughs> so I've come in a lot of women, and I've never got them pregnant. I had a girlfriend who we had sex. I mean, we were together for like seven months. We were having sex three times a day. I never got her pregnant. Mm-hmm. I, I don't now. She wasn't on birth control. No, and then she what we, we break up, and three months later, she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Sometimes I thought I'm shooting about blanks. Your chemistry too, you, know? you thought you were shooting blanks. I really thought I was shooting blanks. Uh, the, the rea- but I'm not. Well, they say even people who have like a low sperm count, like you can still get women pregnant. It just takes 300 partners, apparently. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's I mean, really, that's really good odds if you've had that many partners who may not have been on birth control. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure. I've only gotten one child out of it. Yeah. That's it. And I didn't start my anal oral policy, which you kind of got to go away from because most women aren't. Most women don't like most anal. Most women no. aren't that Especially not it. the first time you meet them. Well, I tell you what, though, actually. <laughs> but the ones get, who do, those are the freaks, right? It's getting more popular, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. They love it. But anyway, um, especially the older women. But I've noticed some of the younger, too. But anyway, um, it's not, it's, it's, you should just wear a condom. Yeah, I you agree. Really yeah. And, and with the older women, a lot of times I haven't because I'm thinking they can't get pregnant, but then I'm reading then there's... where some no, of these chicks can, can at but like you, 45. You don't 50. worry about the STD, getting an STD at all? I, I mean, I do. That's why I normally wear a condom. But I mean, mm-hmm. if I've hung out with a chick a lot and we've mm-hmm. done it and I know mm-hmm. she's clean as a whistle, I mean, it's just whatever. Yeah. It, right. Hey, when you get hot and heavy, man, it's kind of hard to just be like, all right, time out. Let's I just pull a condom on. Uh, uh, no. Do you do you prefer it without a condom? Well, yeah, I think yeah. most we guys do. and girls do. I think you know, yeah. and that's fine. If you're having a lot of partners, I mean, this can be our PSA. Just get tested. You know, your your insurance will cover up to four testings a year for free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, and I get tested, check it out. I didn't know about that. I don't have insurance anyway, but I don't know. It's it's probably a good policy. I mean, who yeah. knows? I'm I probably do have AIDS. I mean, I'm probably... no God. <laughs> <laughs> don't have AIDS. No, oh, that's funny. That's not a good one all to right, get. I right. hear. Okay, and on that, but you got a daughter out of it, and yep. you love your daughter. Oh yeah. So that's the amazing she's part great. of it. She's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. She was a surprise, but oh, what's well. her name? 
Avery Marshall. Awesome. Aww. That's cool. Yeah, we have a daughter too. They're always the greatest surprise. Our daughter just turned three, actually. Yep. yep you yep. guys just got one kid. Just, just the one. one. That's enough for me. I think yeah, that's I think enough. I do too. Like, because we're a little selfish. We like to have stuff for ourselves, and I think you know, the more kids you have, the less you really have time for your own life. Yeah. And I want to be able to give her a lot of our time. And like, mm-hmm. she already takes a lot of our oh, time. Yeah. yeah. I, I assume, like, there was a friend over who had a baby, and Angela was holding the baby. And Olivia got really territorial. Oh, yeah. Like she would not she after like, the baby left, she mommy. would not sit in my lap. She had to sit in <laughs> Angela's lap. And she was like, Ugh. This is she my mommy. Like so no I can see baby. having a second kid being a problem with yeah, well, her. Well, yeah, she's so selfish, but she's a single she's an only <laughs> she's child. She's an only child. So. They only saw you giving affection to her. What's her funny is I'm like, mm-hmm. if if the mother of my child has another baby with some other dude, I ain't watching them both. No. Of like, course. Like it's not your no, kid. you're not a babysitter. No. No, that's your daughter. No, I you're gonna, that. It's you, your daughter. You watch your babysitter. Other children. No, you watch your daughter. Sorry. Yeah. You watch but, your babysitter if you want a banger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you'll watch your daughter, but if it's somebody else's kid, that's babysitting. You get paid to do that. Right. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, no. now one's, one's plenty, especially out of wedlock, and I'll never be in wedlock. So. Nope. You're done with that. You already did two. I think uh, even in wedlock, one is plenty. I really yeah. do. I oh, yeah. When we divorce, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you meant you meant kids, not marriage. Divorce. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never know, man, what happens in life. That's what's sad. How long know. have you guys been married? Ten years. Ten years. Actually, in good. May it'll be eleven. That's a good mm-hmm. run. Yeah. You know, yeah, people are like, run, Josh. no, we still love each other very much. <laughs> we talk about successful relationships. To me, if nobody died, it doesn't matter if it was two weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Why does my six and a half year marriage because it ended up failing why was it not a success no, we had six and a half years if of you pretty still good had, times yeah. what's wrong with that no there's nothing wrong with that if you still had good memories from you like you weren't just miserable the entire time you still no. got something out we of it we got something out yeah. of it we had some good times you can still look back on, on that life. fondly sometimes oh yeah, yeah. like some I'm, people say that the relationship just has a beginning a middle and an end and yeah. that's okay that's a success and why does it even have to be viewed as a failure right some people make it, it to death but yeah. others yeah. do not and gonna, I assume we will. She'll kill was me created long before. When people were yeah. living until yeah. their 30s and dying early. So, like, right. let's be fair. The average trying to make lifespan it to was like these yeah. days is kind of. I mean, it's a challenge. Yeah, people got uh, married at like 13 back in the day for a reason because you mm-hmm. probably wouldn't live. You might have died in childbirth, right? right. Yeah. Or you're going to die at childbirth. Yeah. And a lot of these people that are married like 50 years. Once I dig a little deeper, which I automatically do after yeah. everybody gets done clapping for them, uh, <laughs> they, they hate each other. They live, All of them. They live in separate houses or separate bedrooms at least. He does what she wants. She does what yeah. he, It's like, okay. It's Not all of them. Marriage. I have, Not all of them. I have met a couple, her My grandparents, grandparents were who they were still. deadly in love until she passed. That's mm-hmm. cool. And to the point where she actually interviewed them for her first book because she was doing a book so about sweet. premarital counseling. And she asked, I love this question. She asked them, how important is sex as a part of your marriage still? And, and they're both. in their 80s. And they both immediately said, very important. <laughs> wow. And Angela, and because couldn't, she couldn't ask a further, I, she couldn't ask like, them to clarify because she was like, these are my grandparents, are my grandparents. telling me that they're banging. <laughs> I was like, and it's still at their eighties. It was, it was really still an important sweet. part of their life, and that's why they were still a happy couple. I think, that's cool. yeah, because they but still there, had there a sexual life. There are plenty of couples life. like that too. In fact, many of the couples that I work with are just staying together until their parent or their kids become adults because they don't want to hurt them. Right. But the reality is, it's actually harder on an adult kid to have their parents divorce than if you do it when they're younger, because yeah. then they, there's more resilience and they just kind of. All right, this is how parents are. But like, if you make it all the way to adulthood and really they hated each other that whole time, then like it makes the adult kid, uh, ad- the adult the children adult question children. marriage altogether. Like, has this been a lie this whole time? Yeah, but didn't you question it when you were a kid? I did, but I, it's happened so young. I also just saw it as this is what it's like. I was five when my parents divorced. I was like seven and I hated it. I didn't but, like yeah. it. I was like 32. You were 32? <laughs> you were 32. <laughs> yeah. It had a profound effect on me. Did it? It does. I'm exactly. An now. No, no. <laughs> I didn't care. I, yeah, to whatever. Me, to me, divorce and breaking up, it doesn't, it's like nothing. But, but I hope I'm banging when I'm 80 and I'm planning my retirement right now so I can afford 18 year old prostitutes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. That's right. My right. 401k, baby. <laughs> 401k is just a whole bunch of hookers in a row. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and on that, I think on that's that. a good point to end. That's good. Uh, <laughs>
Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, it's been really good to you. have you. Thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, yeah. well, so good this times. has been the About Sex Podcast, and we've been talking with Nathan Shaw. Uh, with Why don't you go ahead and tell your show again? It's a Brothers on Whatever show, and you can find all our shows and videos. Ooh, videos. Recently, since we left Terrestrial Radio, uh, we are a podcast now at Brothers on Whatever. Dot com or on Facebook, Brothers on Whatever, or on Twitter, You're Brothers everywhere. on What. Mm-hmm. We're probably on, on Instagram what? too, but I don't yeah. know. <laughs> this is my brother's area. Of so, what do you guys talk about on your show a lot? Oh, we just run the whole gamut. You do Obviously, everything. you guys have been on. Um, we've had lately, we had an ex prostitute on to talk about sex trafficking locally. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which apparently I support. No. Uh, <laughs> you support? Her. Um, we we had a guy who was seven years clean from heroin. Yeah, but it's important to talk about that. Yeah, uh, obviously we have bands on and stuff, but we we yeah. try to just we we've, we've been trying to focus a little bit more on some uh, hard hitting uh, podcasts and, yeah. and subject matter. So yeah, yeah brothers on whatever dot com. Just scroll down and you can kind of pick and choose what you want to look at. But watch our videos because those are funny. Yeah, okay, I'm sounds, a funny guy. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well. So be sure to add us on Facebook, review us on iTunes, and send us your questions to aboutsexpodcast at gmail.com. And we may just answer them on air. Mm. So I'm Angela Skirtu. And I'm Josh. And stay Stay kinky, kinky, St. Louis. Louis.